Hi everybody. Um, this presentation is an introduction to in vitro based, physiologically based pharmacokinetic modeling with a special attention to applications to in vitro based inhalation toxicity testing. Here are some abbreviations that I'm going to use during the presentation. So, um, to understand the risk um, of a chemical exposure, we need to understand both pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics for um, exposure response analysis. In the continuum of exposure response relationship, PBPK model links the external exposure to the internal exposure. And the streams of data from new approaches and methodologies in the 21st century toxicology can be translated to in vivo exposure for risk assessment using PBPK as a quantitative bridge. What is a PBPK model? So PBPK model is a mechanistic pharmacokinetic model. It uses physiology as a platform to integrate um, admi biology, such as metabolism, transport, and um, partition. It's a mathematical representation of biology and hypothesis and it uses systems of differential equations based on mass balance. It has a powerful extrapolation um, capability compared to traditional compartmental PK model, including route, dose, and species, even different systems extrapolations. It enables evaluation of the situation um, without conducting in vivo studies because of this greater predictive power. The complexity of each model component is dependent on the model purpose or a goal of the model application for risk assessment. With the new um, approaches and methods based um, PBPK, a tiered approach is used in applying PBPK models to risk and safety assessment. Model parameterization is the one largely supported by new kinds of data, in vitro data, in modern toxicity testing, particularly for metabolism parameters. For inhalation assessment, for inhalation assessment, exposures at the portals, portal of entry, the respiratory tract or the lung, and the systemic target are both need, needed to be described. For the portals of entry part, that position in the respiratory tract in different parts, diffusion and transport of the material through the pulmonary cells and exhalation back to the air, as well as metabolism in the pulmonary cells, different type of cells, and finally the translocation to systemic circulation sites are described in the long part of the model. The pulmonary deposition models, such as MPPD, and CFT models are often used to describe regional deposition of the inhaled agent in the respiratory tract. To increase the accuracy of the regional deposition and the predicted dose symmetry within the respiratory tract. Pulmonary metabolism is very important as it determines the respiratory tract toxicity if the um, mode of action involves metabolic activation 
as well as the bioavailability to systemic circulation and the forms of active entity to be delivered to the systemic side. Once entered in the systemic circulation, the systemic portion of the PVPK model describes the disposition in the body and the subsequent um, exposure at the um, target, site, target site in the body. More details about the two exposure um, sites described by inhalation PVPK model. The respiratory tract effect are dependent on the deposition profiles and the metabolic activation um, in different parts of the respiratory tract. The active entity can be parent and or metabolite of the inhaled agent. For the systemic target effect, factors like the, um, blood air partition, pulmonary metabolism, and diffusion and transport to the systemic blood are the major determinants. Again, both parent and the metabolite can be responsible for the systemic effect of the inhaled agent. Therefore, the key parameters for inhalation PVPK model, in addition to those for the systemic PVPK model, of course, include physiological parameters of lung physiology, especially blood flow, and the ventilation rate, and the chemical-specific parameters, especially blood-to-air partition coefficient, and the biochemical parameters, the metabolic constants in a specific pulmonary region and the pulmonary cells. For example, club cells for metabolic activation for some of the inhaled agents. These parameters determine the respiratory tract exposure as well as the systemic bioavailability. For screening and prioritization purposes, we have a way to rapidly estimate systemic exposure to inhaled agent using only a few but key determinants of systemic exposure of inhaled agent. The general equation derived in Anderson and Clarewell publications, as well as applied to environmental chemicals in um, 2014 UN, um, paper, that the systemic exposure at steady state is dependent on the air concentration and compounds blood to air partition, as well as liver metabolic clearance and liver blood flow and ventilation rate of an individual. This general equation can be reduced to different forms depending on the compound properties. For example, for poorly soluble and poorly metabolized compounds, like perchloroethylene, the steady state systemic exposure is largely dependent on the air concentration and blood to air partition coefficient. On the other hand, for soluble and extremely well metabolized compound like isopropanol, you can see the major determinants of the systemic exposure as ventilation rate and the liver blood flow along with the air concentration. Depending on the model purpose and the mode of action of a compound, a differing degree of complexity in the lung description would be required, ranging from a single simple homogeneous lung compartment to a full-blown multi-compartment lung 
even coupled with a long deposition model like MPPD or CFT model. Here are some examples showing different degrees of complexity in long descriptions in inhalation PVPK models. So the first, the top left, the vinyl chloride model is a good example for a simple long description. Since the purpose of this model is to describe the systemic target, liver toxicity, with an inhalation exposure of this compound, the simplest lung for gas exchange was used. The bottom left, the methylene chloride model is an example with a simple lung metabolism model was used in combination with, with a single um, lung compartment simple description for gas exchange process. This model um, describes both respiratory tract exposure as well as the systemic target exposure um, as well as the metabolic activation in both sites. The style model includes the multi-compartment respiratory tract model, including regional metabolism of this compound and the systemic delivery of the parent and metabolite to the body. The napkin model shows an um, advanced version of the styrene multi-compartment model approach in combination with the CFD model. This is an example showing a hybrid CFD PVPK model. On the um, figure, the left side um, represents the CFD part of the model. The predicted long deposition profiles incorporated into the respiratory tract model within the PBPK model. Additional biological and chemical processes um, details may need to be included depending on the properties of the inhaled agent and their mode of action. For example, the right side, Lee model is showing the um, involvement of phagocytic cells and different modes of translocation um, from small molecules by endocytosis for nanoparticles. The left side, benzo A pyrene exposure, this compound is delivered to the lung as a coating of the particles included in tobacco smoking. So these details definitely call for better in vitro cell or tissue models to estimate these biological mechanisms involved in lung kinetics. Additional example is soluble metal nanoparticles delivering metal ions because of their de dissolution in the lung and pulmonary um, phagocytic cells. The ability to describe pulmonary metabolism or other transformation as shown with the examples of nanoparticles endocytosis and the di dissolution and interaction with um, cellular macromolecules like methylothionine um, is important to be described in the inhalation TVPK models because they can significantly influence the accuracy in the estimated respiratory tract exposure and the systemic delivery and subsequent exposure in the systemic tissue. And these details um, definitely affecting the possible AOP pathways 
that can be influenced um, initiated by the um, inhalation in inhaled agent. This is one of the areas that do emerging in vitro lung models with higher biological fidelity can definitely help to improve inhalation PVPK models. In vitro based PVPK models have already in vitro based PVPK models um, have already been accepted um, for pharmaceuticals. For chemical safety um, assessment um, applications, there has been a significant increase in recognition and the efforts uh, being made to this direction. One good example is US EPA Office of Pesticide Programs. Um, they are reviewing a few in vitro based PVPK models for pesticide risk assessment applications. And also, a recent international workshop organized by both. European Commission's JRC and um, US EPA um, to promote the new generation means that it's supported by new approaches and methodologies, um, PDPK models in risk assessment applications. As stated multiple times, Definitely, there are opportunities, promising opportunities with advanced in vitro lung models for inhalation in vitro based PVPK models. These advanced in vitro respiratory tract models have promises to overcome the current limitations in in vitro models. They can provide increased accuracy and in vivo relevance for the regional and cell-specific metabolism and um, biological effect and describe the um, cellular exposure and response relationship with more confidence. As the in vitro lung models become more and more complicated um, to increase the in vivo relevance, it is now essential to combine in vitro kinetic modeling for meaningful um, IV IVE, especially in vitro air to cell exposure description using computational modeling, for example, simulation of air chamber concentration over time and cell partitioning to describe cell cellular exposure with more um, accuracy as well as the in vitro specific kinetic behaviors as exemplified the particular kinetic behaviors um, as described in the Hindelider um, and colleagues, as well as Thomas and colleagues in these days. So the take home message here is that in the integrated approach, we can see how the PVPK model can and serve as a qualitative bridge, integrating different tools and technologies that are emerging in inhalation toxicology, supporting risk-based decisions for inhalation assessment. Thank you.